Hey, all you sassy preppers, welcome back to Sassy Gal Prepping. I'm your sassy gal, and today we're going to talk about a couple things that I want to get out to you. It's important information, and I hope you take some notes and also check the description box for links so that you can help yourself be better prepared, be uh, knowledgeable, and to also help spread the word to others and share these things with them as well. <laughs> So the first thing that I want to tell you about is the meat recall. So if you purchased ground beef within the last few months, you're going to want to check your freezer to make sure that if you have these brands, you're going to want to check them carefully, okay? So just a few days ago, the Department of um, Agriculture Food and Safety Inspection Service announced that Lakeside Refrigerated Services has recalled 120,872 pounds of ground beef products due to possible contamination of E. coli 0103. Y'all watch Bugs Bunny? Or the little space dude that would be like, it's the Acme E. coli 1000. Yeah, I just instantly go into like things like that into my head. Bugs Bunny ruined me, I think. So anyway, the beef was sold at Walmart as well as Whole Foods, Target, Winn-Dixie. And if you shop at those stores, you're going to want to check your stuff. The recall applies to ground beef products produced between February 1st and April 8th, which display the establishment number EST46841 inside the USDA mark of inspection. So go look at your, at your meat. Don't automatically go down there and throw all your meat out that you purchased for the last couple months, okay? Do, do the checking to make sure okay and y'all should be cooking your meat make sure that you cook it and it gets to a temperature of 165 or higher i like mine at 180 thank you very much so the brands that we're looking for are market side butcher i find that at walmart all the time nature's reserve tajima or tajima uh thomas farms seg and weiss um i'm going to leave a link for you it's there's a pdf that i have it's to a chart which looks like this okay you look, looks like this. And you could take that and look and see if any of these brands go to your store, which I found two of mine. Um, one of them was at a Walmart. So I'm going to go because that's market side butcher. It's at my Walmart. And so I'll go and check any of those meats that we purchased. Okay. That's what you're going to want to do. Then you might want to get rid of it, but that's up to you. You know, everybody's different. Don't know what everybody wants to do, right? They also go on to say that the ground beef was sold to retailers nationwide, including more than 1,350 Walmart stores across 17 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico. Get this. This isn't the only recall Walmart has suffered recently. Last week, Walmart pulled Turkey Hills chocolate marshmallow premium ice cream from its freezers because the product might have contained undeclared peanuts. So y'all, if you're allergic to peanuts, better be checking your Turkey Hill products, okay? In addition, Walmart also recalled organic zucchini over concerns of salmonella contamination. So do check the links below, check your products because you may not have a product in your freezer that has that particular code on it, okay? So don't just go in there and be like, oh my gosh, meat recall, pull my meat, da da da, because you may not have that problem, okay? So just be checking it. And again, be careful, right? Wash your hands when you're handling meat. If you're doing one thing with chicken before you go to another type of meat, you better be washing and sanitizing the surfaces, bef surfaces before you go on to something else, okay? Always cleaning up. That's the best way when you're dealing with things like salmonella and stuff, you want to just just always keep your services clean and sanitized. Washing with hot soapy water and then sanitizing with a Lysol wipe and then letting it air dry will take care of it. And don't use the same cutting board when you're dealing with chicken before you switch to meat, okay? A few simple tips from your sassy gal. There you go. So the next thing that's got my sassy pants all up in a bunch, y'all. Oh, gosh. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-
okay? And this also involves the WHO, okay? And this assembly um, is going to vote on amendments to the international health regulations. Why do we need to be concerned about what they're going to vote on? Well, on January 18th, 2022, that's just a few months ago, the United States submitted a number of amendments to the IHR, the International Health Regulations, okay, that serve to give away even more of our sovereignty and greatly empower the World Health Organization. Now, if you've never heard of the IHR, well, the IHR, um, International Health Regulations, the United States agreed to this back in 2005. They, they agreed to these regulations, and these regulations can override and supersede the U.S. Constitution. That's very dangerous. The amendments do not need to be approved by two-thirds of the U.S. Senate because we have already agreed to obey the IHR by virtue of our membership in the United Nations and the WHO. So we have already given away some of our sovereignty. In addition to the proposed amendments to the IHR, the WHO has also set up something called an intergovernmental negotiating body, the INB, that is actively negotiating an international Treaty on Pandemic Prevention, Preparedness, and Response, the, the TPP. And I'm not talking toilet paper, y'all, okay? It's the Treaty on Pandemic Prevention, Preparedness, and Response, all right? So if you guys are hearing something about the Pandemic Treaty, okay, it doesn't exist yet. It's being drafted as we speak right now, okay? It doesn't exist. So this is all part of a bigger thing to get everyone talking about the pandemic treaty while everything is going to be happening May 22nd through the 28th and it's the amendments that are being voted on. We have to pay attention to the amendments. The treaty is just the, you know, all of the fancy things here and it all sounds good, but it's all part of a, the bigger picture. The amendments are will cede additional sovereignty, control, and legal authority over to the World Health Organization, the WHO, giving them the ability to declare that a, uh, a pandemic exists and that they'll be able to override a country. We can't give them that much power, y'all, okay? We can't. So what we have going on here, I guess, bottom line, is that the United States is going to hand over our sovereignty to regional directors at the WHO and give them the power to um, override us and, and tell us what we're going to have to do. I, I, I urge you all to talk to your local representatives, your state representatives, okay, and, and your, your representatives in Congress. Get with them, ask them if they know about this, what are they going to do? Is there anything that they can do to push back and to urge those who are gonna be going to the convention in May? Are they, you know, how can we stop this? This will be game over and it will take effect in November. I just, I don't feel like we have a lot of time here anymore. And this just adds to that sense of urgency that we need to be getting on the ball, you guys. Everybody be getting on the bandwagon. And again, do research the links, go to that website, tell other people, share this with some of the other bigger prepper channels. Some of y'all have, um, you know, a wider reach than I do and maybe get on with them and um, have them because they're the ones that are doing more research or they have bigger connections and so ask them what their opinions are on this because um, you know whether or not it's a plan for a global takeover it sure does look that way it's all about power and 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 we all know if you're if a lot of us preppers are um, very aware of what the bible says and this right here is not surprising because we can see how it fits into the grand scheme of things of what has been written and foretold many, many, many years ago. It's not surprising, but we need to be, we can't just be sitting back and just letting it happen and say, you know, yeah, Lord, come. Yeah, I'll just come and get me. I'll just, I'll just wait here for you. So we have to be prepared to take care of ourselves, be prepared mentally to be able to stand up, you know, so, so we have to kind of know what's going on so that one, we can prepare here because we know that there's going to be 
you know, there's a global food crisis and there's these things happening, right? And but until Jesus comes, we need to be preparing, but we also need to be spreading the word and we need to be spreading the word. There is hope at the end of all of this, although it doesn't look like it and we may have to suffer for a little while. That's okay because in the end, this, this suffering will pass. This too shall pass and we shall um, we shall be together in glory, but we got to be telling others and we got to be pointing them to the hope and that's Jesus Christ, y'all. Be very careful, be aware and be in prayer. We need to pray for truth to prevail. That is my sassy word for today. Y'all pull up your sassy pants and prep it, pack it, and stack it, y'all.